Heraclius was Byzantine emperor from 610 to 641. He was responsible for introducing Greek as the Eastern Empire's official language. His rise to power began in 608, when he and his father, Heraclius the Elder, the Exarch of Africa, successfully led a revolt against the unpopular usurper Phocis. Heraclius's reign was marked by several military campaigns. The year Heraclius came to power, the empire was threatened on multiple frontiers. Heraclius immediately took charge of the ongoing war against the Sassanids. The first battles of the campaign ended in defeat for the Byzantines. The Persian army fought their way to the Bosphorus. However, because Constantinople was protected by impenetrable walls and a strong navy, Heraclius was able to avoid total defeat. Soon after, he initiated reforms to rebuild and strengthen the military. Heraclius drove the Persians out of Asia Minor and pushed deep into their territory, defeating them decisively in 627 at the Battle of Nineveh. The Persian king Khosrau II was overthrown and executed by his son Kavad II, who soon sued for a peace treaty agreeing to withdraw from all occupied territory. This way peaceful relations were restored to the two deeply strained empires. However, soon after his victory he faced a new threat, the Muslim invasions. Emerging from the Arabian Peninsula, the Muslims quickly conquered the Sassanid Empire. In 634 the Muslims invaded Rome and Syria, defeating Heraclius a brother Theodore. Within a short period of time the Arabs would also conquer Mesopotamia, Armenia, and Egypt. Heraclius entered diplomatic relations with the Croats and Serbs in the Balkans. He tried to repair the schism in the Christian Church in regard to the Monophysites by promoting a compromised doctrine called Monothelitism. The Church of the East was also involved in the process. Eventually, however, this project of unity was rejected by all sides of the dispute. Early life. Origins Heraclius was the eldest son of Heraclius the Elder and Epiphania, of an Armenian family from Cappadocia, probably of Arsacid descent. Beyond that, there is little specific information known about his ancestry. His father was a key general during Emperor Morris's war with Baram Chobin, usurper of the Sassanid Empire, during 590. After the war, Morris appointed Heraclius the Elder to the position of Exarch of Africa. Revolt against Phocus and accession in 608, Heraclius the Elder announced his loyalty to the Emperor Phocus, who had overthrown Morris six years earlier. The rebels issued coins showing both Heraclius addressed as consuls, though neither of them explicitly claimed the imperial title at this time. Heraclius, a younger cousin Nicetas, launched an overland invasion of Egypt. By 609, he had defeated Phocas' general Bonosis and secured the province. Meanwhile, the younger Heraclius sailed eastward with another force via Sicily and Cyprus. As he approached Constantinople, he made contact with prominent leaders and planned an attack to overthrow aristocrats in the city, and soon arranged a ceremony where he was crowned and acclaimed as emperor. When he reached the capital, the Excubitors, an elite imperial guard unit led by Phocas' son-in-law Priscus, deserted to Heraclius, and he entered the city without serious resistance. When Heraclius captured Phocas, he asked him, Is this how you have ruled, wretch? Phocas said in reply, And will you rule better, with that? Heraclius became so enraged that he beheaded Phocas on the spot. He later had the genitalia removed from the body because Phocas had raped the wife of Phocas, a powerful politician in the city. On October 5, 610, Heraclius was crowned for a second time, this time in the chapel of St. Stephen within the Great Palace. At the same time he married Fabia, who took the name Eudokia. After her death in 612, he married his niece Martina in 613. This second marriage was considered incestuous and was very unpopular. In the reign of Heraclius are two sons, the device of Martina was to become the center of power and political intrigue. 
Despite widespread hatred for Martina in Constantinople, Heraclius took her on campaigns with him and refused attempts by Patriarch Sergius to prevent and later dissolve the marriage. Byzantine Sassanid War of 602-628 Initial Persian advantage during his Balkan campaigns, Emperor Maurice and his family were murdered by Phocas in November 602 after a mutiny. Khosrau II of the Sassanid Empire had been restored to his throne by Maurice, and they had remained allies. Thus, the Persian king Khosrau II sees the pretext to attack the Byzantine Empire and reconquer the Byzantine province of Mesopotamia. Khosrau had at his court a man who claimed to be Maurice's son Theodosius, and Khosrau demanded that the Byzantines accept this Theodosius as emperor. The war initially went the Persians' way, partly because of Phocas' brutal repression and the succession crisis that ensued as the general Heraclius sent his nephew Nicetas to attack Egypt, enabling his son Heraclius the Younger to claim the throne in 610. Phocas, an unpopular ruler who is invariably described in historical sources as a tyrant, was eventually deposed by Heraclius, who sailed to Constantinople from Carthage with an icon affixed to the prow of his ship. By this time, the Persians had conquered Mesopotamia and the Caucasus, and in 611 they overran Syria and entered Anatolia. A major counter-attack led by Heraclius two years later was decisively defeated outside Antioch by Shah Baraz and Shahan, and the Roman position collapsed. The Persians devastated parts of Asia Minor and captured Chalcedon across from Constantinople on the Bosphorus. Over the following decade the Persians were able to conquer Palestine and Egypt and to devastate Anatolia, while the Avars and Slavs took advantage of the situation to overrun the Balkans, bringing the empire to the brink of destruction. In 613, the Persian army took Damascus with the help of the Jews, seized Jerusalem in 614 damaging the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and capturing the True Cross, and afterwards capturing Egypt in 617 or 618. With the Persians at the very gate of Constantinople, Heraclius thought of abandoning the city and moving the capital to Carthage. But the powerful church figure Patriarch Sergius convinced him to stay. Safe behind the walls of Constantinople, Heraclius was able to sue for peace in exchange for an annual tribute of a thousand talents of gold, a thousand talents of silver, a thousand silk robes, a thousand horses, and a thousand virgins to the Persian king. The peace allowed him to rebuild the empire's army by slashing non-military expenditure, devaluing the currency, and melting down. With the backing of Patriarch Sergius, church treasures to raise the necessary funds to continue the war, Byzantine counter-offensive and resurgence on April 5, 622, Heraclius left Constantinople, entrusting the city to Sergius and General Bonus as regents of his son. He assembled his forces in Asia Minor, probably in Bithynia, and, after he revived their broken morale, he launched a new counter-offensive, which took on the character of a holy war. An Acaera Poeto's image of Christ was carried as a military standard. The Roman army proceeded to Armenia, inflicted a defeat on an army led by a Persian allied Arab chief, and then won a victory over the Persians under Shah Beraz. Heraclius would stay on campaign for several years. On March 25, 624 he again left Constantinople with his wife, Martina, and his two children, after he celebrated Easter in Nicomedia on April 15. He campaigned in the Caucasus, winning a series of victories in Armenia against Khosrau and his generals Shah Beraz, Shahin, and Shuraplakan. However, in the same year the Visigoths succeeded in recapturing Cartagena, capital of the western Byzantine province of Spania, resulting in the loss of one of the few minor provinces that had been conquered by the armies of Justinian I. 
In 626, the Avars and Slavs supported by a Persian army commanded by Shah Beraz besieged Constantinople, but the siege ended in failure, while a second Persian army under Shahin suffered another crushing defeat of the hands of Heraclius a brother Theodore. With the Persian war effort disintegrating, Heraclius was able to bring the Gokturks of the western Turkic Khaganate, Zebel, who invaded Persian Transcaucasia. Heraclius exploited divisions within the Persian Empire, keeping the Persian general Shah Beraz neutral by convincing him that Khosrau had grown jealous of him and had ordered his execution. Late in 627 he launched a winter offensive into Mesopotamia, where, despite the desertion of his Turkish allies, he defeated the Persians under Azad at the Battle of Nineveh. Continuing south along the Tigris he sacked Khosrau's great palace at Dastagird and was only prevented from attacking Cte Siphon by the destruction of the bridges on the Narawan Canal. Discredited by this series of disasters, Khosrau was overthrown and killed in a killed by his son Kavad II, who at once sued for peace agreeing to withdraw from all occupied territories. In 629 Heraclius restored the true cross to Jerusalem in a majestic ceremony. Heraclius took for himself the ancient Persian title of King of Kings after his victory over Persia. Later on, starting in 629, he styled himself as Basileus, the Greek word for sovereign, and that title was used by the Roman emperors for the next 800 years. The reason Heraclius chose this title over previous Roman terms such as Augustus has been attributed by some scholars as relating to his Armenian origins. Heraclius' a defeat of the Persians ended a war that had been going on intermittently for almost 400 years and led to instability in the Persian Empire. Kavad II died only months after assuming the throne, plunging Persia into several years of dynastic turmoil and civil war. Only when Yazjad III, a grandson of Khosrau II, succeeded to the throne in 632 was there stability. But by then the Sassanid Empire was severely disorganized and had been severely weakened by years of war and civil strife over the succession to the throne. However, the Byzantine victory was ultimately a Pyrrhic one, as the devastating impact of the war left the Byzantines in much weakened state. Within a few years both empires were overwhelmed by the onslaught of the Arabs who had become newly united by Islam, ultimately leading to the Muslim conquest of Persia in 644 and the fall of the Sassanid dynasty in 651. War against the Arabs in 629, the Islamic prophet Muhammad had recently succeeded in unifying all of the nomadic tribes of the Arabian Peninsula. Those tribes had previously been too divided to pose a serious military threat to the Byzantines or the Persians. Now unified and animated by their new conversion to Islam, they comprised one of the most powerful states in the region. The first conflict between the Byzantines and Muslims was the Battle of Mutar in September 629. A small Muslim skirmishing force attacked the province of Arabia but were repulsed. Because the engagement was a Byzantine victory, there was no apparent reason to make changes to the military configuration of the region. Also, once the severity of the Muslim threat was realized, the Byzantines had little preceding battlefield experience with the Arabs, and even less with zealous soldiers united by a prophet. Even the Strategicon, a manual of war praised for the variety of enemies it covers, does not mention warfare against Arabs at any length. The following year the Muslims launched raids into the Arabah south of Lake Tiberias, taking al karak Other raids penetrated into the Negev reaching as far as Gaza. The Battle of Yarmouk in 636 resulted in a crushing defeat for the larger Byzantine army. Within three years, the Levant had been lost again. By the time of Heraclius' death in Constantinople, on February 11, 641, most of Egypt had fallen as well. 